Hello, my name is Devin King, and in this video, I will be showing you how to take a PCB design all the way into ANSYS Ice Pack in the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, as well as showing you how to perform a thermal simulation on the actual PCB. You have to begin by going to the PCB design file, which should look something like this image and this is just its name. I've already have it opened. And this will be the PCB we'll be using. Now, as well as in this software system, you can also see a 3D image. This is the image of where we get our reference for when we're using power dissipation simulations. Make sure all the boxes are checked, and then click on the 3D. And here is where we get the PCB design for when we want to just use the block systems that dissipate thermal energy. Now the problem here is that these blocks, which are referenced to the design as a whole, are not the actual same size as their real counterparts. To find the parameters of the shapes and sizes of those devices, it is best to go to their data sheet. Now we can begin exporting. Go to the export, and we're going to export it as IPC-2581. And the version has to be IPC-2581-B, and the function mode as user defined. We must have each box checked except export cross-section data only. We need everything not just the cross-section data. You must also make sure that it is saved and it will come out as a .xml file. Make sure to save that somewhere you can come back to it easily. I have saved it onto the desktop. And now we select export. And now it is done. Now we can just close the PCB system. You can save it if you want. And now we have to open up ANSYS SI Wave. Should only take a few minutes, maybe even half a minute at most. And here we're here. The import page comes on the moment it also activates. As we see here, we can just go to import IPC2581. Browse. Make sure to remember your file name, NB, and then import. These are all the nets. We need to import all of them. Import configuration. As we can see, it also reads the very passive components, seven capacitors, one inductor, and eight resistors. It first comes out as a trans lucent appearance. These orange items are our passive components, while the large black squares will be the ICs. Make sure to check each box on the side and do that quickly by holding shift, scrolling all the way to the bottom, and then clicking. Fill in these boxes as well and make everything solid. And there we have it, full transfer of our PCB design into SI Wave. Now we need to export it into ANSYS Q3D. Go to export, and here it says, export to Q3D extractor. Click here, and we also have to save that. It's fine. We'll just replace it. 
and this page will come up. We want to invoke Q3D upon completion. Automatically use casual materials. We also have to make sure we go to the same version number. We are using 2020 R1. It's best if the SI wave we're using also matches the version of the ANSYS electronics desktop we're using, which is the Q3D version. Convert extra sinks into sources. Solder balls are sinks. And we also must make sure we get the inductance resistance. We do not need capacitance for this. And now we click OK. It already exists, but it will just make a new one. In just a few moments, it will open up itself with the Q3D board simulation. Okay, it'll just pop up like this. And there we have it. It should not take long. Two minutes at the max. And here is our PCB in ANSYS Q3D. From the bottom to the top. And it even has a clear section of separation. Check the model. It's made of copper, FR-4, and solder. Here in the project manager, we have a Q3D model simulation, not an ice pack simulation. There are two different types of experimental simulations. The Q3D model is for inductance, capacitance, and EM waves in general, while ice pack is mostly used for thermal. Before we can export this system into IcePack, we have to run a current simulation through the system. We begin by checking the nets. Think of the nets as the interconnections within the PCB. Every net can only have one sink and one source. There must be a sink and a source. There can be multiple sources, but they all must flow to just one sink. Sources are denoted by an arrow, and sinks are, well, honestly, it kind of does look like a sink. This would be the nozzle, and this is the basin. Be sure to check your nets here to make sure if they don't have a source and just a sink, you can delete it. Now that has been taken care of, we can now edit the sources. To do that, we have to go to Field Overlays, right-click, and then literally go to Edit Sources. We want DCRL, and here we can already see that it comes out as AMP in units. This can be changed by clicking and then changing it to whichever type of amperage we need. Amps, milliamps, microamps, even kil even kiloamps. We'll just stick with regular amps. Now, to find out the amount of current that needs to be in each component, you can use basic understandings that in DC fields, the current through a capacitor is zero. And then you would also need to have knowledge of the schematic itself that would be extra PCB on. For this example, 
we'll just run a current through the inductor. Five amps that would run from the positive node to the negative node. And then we'll click OK. Next, we should check the setup. Right click and go to properties. The solution frequency does not matter because we're just using DC. I want to save fields, resistance, and inductance only. You'll have 10 passes, which is fine. This will take around, I would say, five minutes to complete, three to five minutes. And that should be all you should change. You can even save this as a default. And you click OK. Before running the simulation, we must validate it. This will tell us if everything is OK. And everything is good. Close and then analyze all. And this will take about three to five minutes. I'll pause the video once it's done. And we're back. There was an error that appeared in which solving for capacitance and conductance had a corrupted mesh file. If this error does occur, you have to go to mesh settings and drag this slider all the way to fine. This will increase the amount of time that it will take for the simulation to finish. So I would highly suggest instead of doing 10 runs to do just five. Now that we have a normal completion on the server, we can now open up an ice pack simulation. Do not worry, do not worry. This does not erase your previous design. It is still in here. They're just separate entities. So now what we need to do is we need to select each of these solid materials. Hold control, right click, select all, and then we'll just copy and paste it. and then paste. Go to fit all, and you'll zoom out to the entire design. Now we'll create the thermal openings. Be sure to press F to start selecting by face. Can rotate it around as well. And now we have our thermal openings. Now, for the board itself, we're not assigning a thermal dissipation. What we're going to assign is thermal EM loss for each of these solids. Before we do that, we must also change the properties of each of these solids. So opening up the properties. Here you'll see the materials are not defined. They're both named copper and due to an error, it did not become this version of the copper with defined, with defined quantities for thermal physics. And you cannot just simply select this material because we'll receive an error since of course they have the same name. What we must do Go back into properties and then clone this copper 
So it'll automatically fill and because it has a different name, we can select it easily. We must do this with the FR4 dielectric and the solder balls. And there we have it. Now, cold control, select each one, right click. Oh, not properties. Select all, right click, and then assign thermal EM loss. Here is where we connect the ice pack design to the Q3D model. We say use this project, so everything under NV. We select a Q3D model, which is our only source design here. And we use set up last adaptive. Simulate source design as needed and preserve the source design solution. Okay. EM loss one. And we need everything. Okay. Next, you have to go to simulations, create a setup. If you're having a high mesh fine rate, you'll just want to probably keep it at 100. We need to select turbulent as usual and solve for fl solve flow and energy equations sequentially. Select okay. We must also go back to global mesh settings. We go to advanced in ice pack and user specified. We allow for stair step meshing, no air grids, and 2D. Then we click OK. Have this run. Then we validate. Close and now analyze all. This may take some time. It could take five to 10 minutes. If it takes over 15 minutes and it stops at creating mesh on local machine, it is best to abort and change your global mesh settings. I will now pause the video. And as we can see, we have passion of mesh settings. So this will run well. I'll pause the video and when we're back, I'll show you how to plot the thermal fields. And we're back. We have a normal completion on the server. So now we can plot the fields. To do this, you have to select each of the solid material that was part of it, the EM loss. Right click, select all, right click again, and then plot fields. This system will give you the volumetric temperature. So that's the temperature surrounding the source in X, Y, and Z directions. And we're going to need this on all objects. Then we'll click done. And there we have it. Now as you can see here, it comes out like concentric rings. That is because for this 3D plane, the best way to describe it is similar to a topographical map, where as each line closer and closer to the center, is said to be a higher elevation. In this case, each concentric line is a higher temperature. Now, as well as volumetric temperature, we can also select surface temperature. First, we'll simply hide the region, select object, 
hide it, then select face, and then plot fields as we have done previously. This time, we do not select all objects. We just say done. And there we have it. A temperature reading that's both surface and temperature. You can even modify the scale. So now it has 200 divisions increasing the accuracy and 200 is the max and we click apply and now we have a much smoother gradient across the whole system here you can see the buildup of temperature is located at the center and at five amps through the inductor which is through this center right here there is a buildup of current located here where there's several layers overlapping. And this concludes my recommendations and instructions on how to get a PCB into ANSYS ice pack with thermal simulation. Thank you for watching.